Pop Americano Hello beautiful people, my spicy spicy meatballs and welcome back to the Gaijin Soprano Here we are like every Sunday with the gaming news of the week and this week is much richer than the last one I have 11 gaming news for you guys so let's dive right in News number 1 during their latest investor relations, Round 1 confirmed that they're gonna open 14 arcades location across the US. This makes me really happy since I grew up in the arcades. Yes, I am that freaking old. I was playing Street Fighter 2 back in the days. So I'm really happy that they're gonna open arcades across Florida, Indiana, New Jersey. Long live the arcades man. I'm happy enough that I live in Japan and the arcade scene is still a thing here, but it's good that even people outside of Japan can enjoy more arcades for sure. News number two. Some leaked documents of the Universal Super Nintendo World have been popping up on Twitter this week. And this seemed to confirm that this section of the Universal Studios dedicated to the Nintendo IP are gonna have Yoshi's Ride, Mario Kart's Ride, Donkey Kong Rides, with some differences between the different parks, there is going to be a park in Orlando, a park in Hollywood, a park in Singapore, but most of all, especially for me, the first one to open in Japan, 2020, same year as the Olympics, Akira, everything is happening in 2020, yay! News number 3, this week Pete Hines from Bethesda actually said that uh, yeah, the Nintendo Switch showed good results for the games such as Doom, Skyrim, so he found out that there is a sizable audience for these types of games on Switch, a Nintendo console. He seemed fairly surprised about it. Are you telling me that Nintendo consoles are not only played by children up to 8 years old? Nah, it can't be. News number 4, Miyamoto, the gods among men, the saint, our lord and savior, did say this week that Nintendo is not falling behind in terms of VR development or network services. And I love the guy, he's probably the person that influenced my life more than anybody else. But uh, no, where are my Super Nintendo games on Switch? This is just one of the most basic things, and we don't even have that. Nah, Nintendo and services and online are still two separate worlds, man. Just admit it. News number 5. Cuphead, one of my favorite games of the generation, is gonna have his own Netflix show. That's awesome. That game is one of the best looking games of all time. With that dirty style animation, amazing jazz music. I really hope they do a good job that is worthy of the game. News number 6. This week the BBC reported on their article that two children having access to their parents' bank account spent $550 on player packs for FIFA Online. And EA still goes around saying stuff like, oh yeah, I mean, microtransactions are not dangerous, they're like surprise mechanics. But I mean, I don't want to just blame EA for this. If you're a parent and you have children, how about you don't give them your bank account, your credit card's details? They're just bad parenting, man. Be better. News number 7. Analyst for video games Michael Pachter said that GameStop will have about 10 years before they basically die. Because games on physical formats are dying in favor of like streaming or just downloading games online on network services. And okay, I live in Japan, I don't have GameStops around me, I haven't bought stuff from GameStop in a really long time. To be honest, even when I was back in Italy, I always thought that their price points were insane and not good enough. But at the same time, part of me is kinda sad that physical media is dying, because I still like owning physical things, not collecting, but just the things I really, really like. So I still hope that on the side of digital distribution, we're still gonna have a niche market of physical media that allows me to buy the games I like the best and put them on my freaking shelf. 
News number eight. Nintendo announced this week what are gonna be the two free games you're gonna have with your Nintendo Online subscription. And they're gonna be Breaking Crew and Donkey Kong 3. Yeah, talking about uh, uh, not falling behind on network services. No SNES games yet. Outside of that, I think that even more than the game, actually the coolest thing they announced is that they're gonna implement a rewind mechanic called Makimodoshi in Japanese which basically allow you, every time you die, or even if you don't die, to go back frame by frame to a previous section of the game you just played. I think this is a cool thing because it might enable younger audiences or people that are not as good at video games to play even older classics like the one on NES or SNES, and when they die they don't get as frustrated because they can just rewind the game and try again. News number 9, here we go! Heavily rumored, Nintendo finally announced Switch Lite. It's coming out in September 20, 2019, this year, for a price point of $199, which translates to 199 euro for Europe and about 22,000 yen for here in Japan. The console comes in three colors, gray, yellow, and turquoise. The turquoise one looks pretty, let me tell you. The main differences between the Switch Lite and the regular Switch you can buy now is that the Switch Lite does not have detachable Joy-Cons, you can't dock the console to the TV so you can only play the console portable, and it doesn't have the HD Rumble which makes it also lighter and smaller overall. So, but Nintendo is also improving the battery life of the console apparently, which is supposed to last between 20 and 30% longer. So clearly this console is kinda gonna substitute the 3DS and it's gonna be a fully portable console. So if you're interested in that and you don't wanna play it at home on your big TV, this is a cheaper, better option probably. News number 10. Amazon Mexico leaked the date, the release date of Luigi's Mansion 3? early October? Obviously this is a rumor, but if it's true, this would put it in the launch window of the Switch Lite, and that would be awesome. I'm really looking forward to that game. I loved Regis Mansion 1 and 2, so bring it on. And at last, news number 11, Konami talking about video games? Yeah, I mean, sadly these days when Konami talks about video games, it's only for retro game stuff, but this is actually good news. Konami announced that on March 19, 2020, for a price of 10,500 yen, which will probably translate to about 99 euro for Europe and 99 dollars for North America and the US, has announced a re-release of some of their older console, this time in mini version, HDMI, so you can attach them to your super high resolution TV, just like Sony did with the Mini PlayStation Classic and Nintendo did with the NES Mini and the SNES Mini. The consoles they're gonna re-release are the TurboGrafx-16 Mini for North America, the PC Engine Core Graphs Mini for Europe, and the PC Engine Mini for Japan. But these are basically the same console. The console was just the PC Engine Japanese-made console that was released in the US with the name TurboGrafx-16. In the description of this video, I will also attach a link with the list of all the games releasing on this console. And there is a bunch of cool stuff in that, so go check it out. Alright, here you have it, your gaming news of the week from your Gaijin Soprano. If you like this video, please like, share and subscribe. And you can also check my Twitch details on the description of this video if you want to check my streams or also you want to check my other video on the same YouTube channel. And as I always say, stay safe, be nice and eat pizza. Ciao!